Hello students, how are you? This is your Imtiaz Parvez sir. Welcome to my online class organized by Cantonment Public School and College Swedpur. Today we will discuss melting and boiling point which belongs to chapter 2 in our chemistry book. So all of you are quite familiar with the term melting and boiling point. What is melting? Melting is a process where a solid substance convert liquid substance by means of applying heat and in case of boiling a liquid substance convert gaseous substance by means of applying heat. So uh, I would like to give you the definition first what is melting point and what is boiling point then we will discuss how we will determine the melting and boiling point of a substance. So melting is the process I told you where a solid substance start sorry solid substance start melts. Solid when I apply some heat on a solid substance generally solid substance convert to liquid. This process is the melting when solid substance convert to liquid this is the melting and when a liquid substance liquid substance on the applying on applying heat when a liquid substance convert a gas this process is called boiling so first of all I'd like to give you the definition of melting point what is melting point at generally at normal pressure the temperature at which a solid substance start melts and convert into liquid substance is called melting point of that substance every pure substance has a definite melting point but the impure substance the melting point of that kind of impure substance can be vary from uh, substance to substance and in case of liquid substance we give the definition of boiling point at normal pressure when a liquid substance start melts when a liquid substance convert a gaseous substance the temperature is called the boiling point of that liquid the boiling point and melting point of a pure substance is a fixed temperature but in case of a impure substance it's a kind of range and we can also tell that if the boiling point deviated from the standard one or melting point deviated from the standard one then we can easily tell that that substance is not the pure one so today first of all i would like to give you some examples experiment how we can determine the melting point have a look suppose we are trying to determine the melting point of urea which is a fertilizer we know the formula of urea is NH2CO NH2 generally we found the urea in a granular form and it's a solid substance so if it is a solid substance it must have a melting point so how will we determine the melting point of urea so for this first of all we place a net on a tripod I, I would not like to draw that net on tripod because if I draw the tripod and net then it would be very difficult for you to understand the picture and upon the net we place a glass wash glass and in the wash glass we take some urea and line a thermometer and the bulb of the thermometer is placed inside the urea and now if we apply heat then what will happen when the heat is applied with the help of a Bunsen burner, the liquid solid urea will gain, gain the heat and it will gradually convert to liquid. When the solid urea absorbs the heat, the kinetic energy of the particle will increase and the solid urea will convert to liquid. If you have a close look on the temperature, then we will see that at 130 3 degrees Celsius temperature urea start melts so this is the melting point of urea the temperature at which a solid substance start melt not complete melt just start melt this is the melting point of that substance in case of urea the melting point of pure urea is 133 degrees Celsius temperature but what will happen if we take an impure substance urea is a pure substance but if you take an impure substance then what will happen for example if we try to get the melting point of wax you know wax is not a pure substance there are many kinds of uh, 
hydrocarbons are present in wax so we'll try to find out the melting point of wax so first of all we need a powdery form of wax take the wax powder in a beaker and put it here again we will put a thermometer through a liner and put the valve of the thermometer inside the wax now take the content and take the beaker in a water bath water bath means we will put the beaker in a container which contain water but always be careful that the water will not go inside the beaker now if we apply heat with the help of a bunsen burner then what will happen you see that we are applying heat on the water water will absorb the heat and homogeneously and the heat will gradually transform to the wax inside the beaker when the heat is transformed inside the beaker then we will see that wax will start melt but if you have a close look on the wax container then you will see that wax is not melt at a fixed point rather than it will melt at a range of temperature so in case of impure substance there will there will be no fixed or definite melting point rather than it will have a range let it's uh, 50 to 55 degrees celsius temperature so this is the melting point of impure wax now in case of boiling point how will you determine the boiling point of a liquid you know the boiling is the process where a liquid substance starts melt not the all the liquid convert to milk the temperature at which liquid substance just start melts is called the boiling point sorry the liquid substance start boil is called the boiling point of that substance again if we take a beaker which is fill up with some water now place the thermometer here and the bulb of the thermometer is inside the water and if you apply some heat through a bunsen burner then what will happen you will see that the temperature of the water raise and gradually when the temperature reached at 100 degrees celsius temperature then the water will start boil okay so 100 degrees celsius temperature is the boiling point of water so this is the very easier one to get, find out the boiling point of a liquid substance now today we'll discuss uh, another important thing uh, which is which frequently came in the ssc board exam the heating and cooling curve of a substance okay if we try to uh, figure it uh, if you take a iceberg or any kind of liquid any kind of solid substance and start start heating then what will happen gradually the temperature of the solid substance increase after a certain time it will convert to liquid and if you gradually heat the liquid then the liquid will convert to gas okay we will try to uh, figure it in a graph let we take a graph you know graph has x-axis and y-axis this is the x-axis and this is y-axis let the x-axis represent the time or heat and the y-axis represents the temperature in degrees celsius let we take a piece of ice a piece of ice let its temperature is minus 20 degrees celsius temperature so here the temperature is minus 20 degrees celsius minus 20 degrees celsius temperature if we apply heat on the ice piece then what will happen the temperature of the ice piece or ice bark will gradually increase when we applying heat the temperature of the ice is increased that means temperature is now minus 20 when we apply heat the temperature is minus 10 minus 5 gradually the temperature is increased but you will see that after some after certain time the temperature will not increase temperature will remain constant for some times we are gradually in give the heat we are not we are not stopping heating we are just continuing to heat but the temperature will not increase for a certain moment 
if you see that uh, temperature the temperature will be 0 degree celsius 0 degree celsius so at 0 degree celsius temperature the solid ice start boils this is the boiling point of the ice okay when the iceberg or piece of ice reaches at 0 degree celsius temperature here all the ice start to convert in liquid water that's why we are applying heat but the temperature is not increasing let this point is a this is the b point and this is c point when we apply heat on the line of a b the temperature gradually increase when the iceberg or the temperature reached at b point we are increasing heat we are giving the heat but the temperature is not increase this is because here the ice solid ice present but when it reaches to b the solid ice convert to liquid water that means there is a physical change here happen the solid substance convert to liquid for this we need to apply some work and for work we need some energy and the energy is absorbed by from, from the heat that's why we are giving the heat gradually but the temperature is not increasing so at b point the solid substance start melts that's why b is the melting point of ice and the melting point of ice is 0 degree Celsius temperature. On the line of BC, the solid ice convert to liquid water. At C point, when all the solid ice completely convert to water of 0 degree Celsius temperature. Listen, the temperature of here, uh, B here is 0 degree Celsius temperature and the temperature of C is also 0 degree Celsius temperature. But in B, the solid ice start melts and at c point all the ice convert to the liquid water okay and when all the icebergs convert to liquid water then if we are increasing the if we are giving the heat then the temperature will again increase so this in that place on the line of bc some heat is absorbed by the uh, iceberg who is or absorbed by the piece of ice which start melts which convert to liquid for this we need to give some energy and for this reason here some energy is absorbed this is called the latent heat of fission okay what is the definition of latent heat of fission the heat which is needed to convert a solid solid substance into liquid substance is called latent heat of fission okay and when the all water sorry when the iceberg convert to water if we applying the temperature applying the heat the temperature will increase and gradually it will increasing and after certain time later you will see that again same thing happened we are giving the heat but the temperature is not increasing temperature is remain same the temperature is 100 degree celsius temperature 100 degree celsius temperature is the boiling point of water let it's the d point at d point uh, when water reaches at d point that means at 100 degree celsius temperature the liquid water start convert vaporizing or start convert in the gaseous form that means here also a latent heat is needed which is called latent heat of latent heat of vaporization so sorry this one is the latent heat of fission and the upper one is the latent heat of vaporization okay when water is at d point at d point water start to boil the temperature of the water will not increase until all the water convert to vapor when all the water convert to vapor then the temperature of the vapor will again increase if we apply heat this is the e point and this is f point okay so on the line of de the liquid water and gaseous vapor will coexist on the line of bc the solid ice and liquid water will coexist okay and temperature will not increase due to the presence of latent heat here here some energy is required to convert the physical state and that's why when we are applying heat the temperature will not increase and according to the definition of melting and boiling point the temperature at which uh, the solid substance start melt not complete melt 
at sea point the all the solid substance completely melt but this c is not the boiling point boiling point sorry this c is not the melting point melting point is the b according to the definition because here at b point solid start melt again in case of d or e the temperature remains same 100 degrees celsius temperature but at d point the liquid start boil that's why d is the boiling point not e yet the temperature are same but the heat is not same in d and e point okay so this is the basic things of the heating curves melting and boiling point of a liquid and solid okay and if you have further question then you can contact me with whatsapp through whatsapp i am always i am always available at whatsapp so have a good day bye